Hi, Cancer. Welcome to August. Let's go ahead and see what comes out here for you guys. Okay, the Hermit. Actually, he kind of flipped out as I was preparing the deck before I was kind of ready to start pulling cards. Um, so yeah, this energy kind of came out twice already for you. Second house activity makes sense, right? Second house tends to pull us into home life, quiet life, you know, and after having just gone through all of the astrological events that just happened in your season, um, you know, this is, I think, very welcome. It's a very comforting energy to embrace. It's one of soul searching and really asking yourself the big questions. What's really important? Where do I want my life to go? And who do I want to spend my life with? There is a prioritization that goes on with the hermit. And usually when that happens, there is an aspect of really starting to like say, okay, there's only a couple of things that really matter. All the rest doesn't really matter. There is a separation from the worldly or the material that happens here as well, um, where you connect more with nature and you connect more with your place in nature, right, in the world on earth. And because you have that sort of natural assimilation that kind of goes on during this process, everything else that's unimportant sort of just fades away. So if you are in this position of feeling like you need to make a decision about something, if you're feeling like you need to choose a path and like they're kind of different paths and they can really determine, you know, the outcome of your life. If you feel like you can't make a decision, I would just recommend not making a decision, right? And just simply keeping things the way they are for now. There's safety in the way that things are for now. And because of the shakeup that just happened, you know, I think that emotional safety, that emotional security is really important. That was big for the eclipses. It was like career or emotional security. And like it was kind of like on both ends of the spectrum there, the way that people really handled that. And a, another major arcana, a temperance card. Interesting how these are the cards of Virgo and Sagittarius. Um, these are such teaching energies right they're such healing energies this one is kind of you know the wisdom and this one is the peace that comes with it if you're not feeling at peace if your whole world is sort of shaken up right now it's probably a good idea to do lots of meditation right now because you're going to receive a lot of downloads you're going to receive a lot of information you're going to have significant awakenings during this period of time your angels, your guides are very much right next to you. And I think on some, some level, they are trying to communicate with you. They're trying to get something through. They're trying to wake you up for something. You know, these, these eclipses were important because they're kind of like in the middle between, you know, January and January. So we're kind of mashed in the middle. So whatever happened for you in July, it's going to be resolving in the next six months and probably within the next year, full come full circle. So for you to be at peace with how things are, is going to be important, you know, and um, for you to relinquish control in the things that you definitely don't have control over, like you definitely don't have control over certain people. You definitely don't have control over like what the owner of the company is going to do, right? <laughs> you just, you simply don't. So it's, you know, maybe there's an aspect of survival, right? You got to do what you got to do. It's second house. So it's all about doing what you got to do, taking care of yourself and relying only on yourself to make sure that, you know, you're secure. But it's also very relaxed. There's not a lot of pressure with these transits, okay? And while you may feel stuck being a cardinal energy who always kind of wants to move forward, it's probably a good time to just allow yourself to feel a little bit stuck because the stuck feeling is just a facade because you're so used to going after something, but there's always movement, there's always motion. So even though you can't perceive movement in the external world, doesn't mean there's not movement inside. What did I just say? So there are going to be answers, there are going to be opportunities, there are going to be saving graces that come your way. Absolutely, Ace of Cups. 
But again, this is a dove of peace. And you have to be at peace in order to attract a peaceful outcome. One of my favorite um, kind of mantras that I use for myself is to manifest the feelings, not the circumstances. So when you work on your meditations, you work, work on your manifestations, simply manifest the way you want to feel rather than what you want on the outside because the universe can surprise you right the universe can is way smarter than you'll ever be so it can surprise you and this can be a big surprise in a way i'm actually feeling like this is probably going to be a big surprise like now that the words are coming out of my mouth and i'm looking at the card in the camera i'm like yeah this, like, like get ready because I think something's really coming. It might not be in August, okay? It might be in third house activity, right? It might be in fourth or fifth house activity. So it might be a few months out. So it doesn't have to be directly in August. That's okay. But it's in the works. And it's in the works because you're doing the work, you know? So that's great. The Ace of Cups can be very different from what you think you want, but it's going to make you feel exactly the way you want to feel. Manifest the feelings, not the circumstances. This one kind of wants to come out. Seven of coins. So this is perfect for a hermit. It's right below the hermit card. So I know there are things that you're wanting to take care of. There are certain things that you're feeling quite dissatisfied about. Maybe there's some money stuff going on, right? There's some funny, a lot of focus on money, right? Venus in her second house, which is where she really likes to be. So yeah, money is definitely a highlight. Love is definitely going to be a highlight with both Venus and Mars in the second house. Um... I'm just kind of sorry, I just had to do a quick glance over at the stars for a second. But yeah, so, you know, whatever is missing, whatever is dissatisfactory for you, you now have an opportunity to really illuminate. It's not that because these are like coins are the physical manifestation. It's what happens when the cups, the wands and the swords all work together, right? That that's when the coins happen and exist in the rea in the real world. So clearly there's something a little bit off about either your sword energy, which is your thoughts, your cup energy, which is your emotions or your wand energy, which is like your spirit or your will. So clearly there's a mismatch going on there. Why am I saying all of that? Because this triangle here on the heart of the angel represents the triangular, right? Cups, spirits, or cups, swords, wands, right? The, the trinity, the trinity within ourself here, here, and here. So clearly something's off internally if you feel like something is off externally. And the hermit gives you the power to really delve deep to examine like what's really going on here because there's no reason for you to actually feel dissatisfied at all there's no reason for you to feel any feeling of lack there's no i mean this is a lot right you've worked really hard and you've reaped certain rewards and yet still why why are you feeling kind of blah about it what's the real issue what fear exists because everything usually comes down to one of two emotions love or fear right every negative emotion jealousy revenge whatever it usually comes down to a fear right so what are you really afraid of and why why are you afraid to express gratitude here in this moment okay so the hermit seems to be coming on real strong real strong and the hermit can be harsh because, you know, it is a Virgo energy, so it is critical and it does tell truth, you know, and truth is sometimes hard to swallow a little bit. But I know that there are certain things that you're wanting in your life. There's a certain romance that you want. There's a certain financial situation that you want. There's a certain living situation that you want. Like I know that stuff exists in your heart and here it is. It's wanting to come into you. And I think doors are gonna start opening for you if you take this time, if you take this month to just relax and to establish that feeling of peace within your being. Mm-hmm. The gratitude. The gratitude is the most important thing. Um, eye on the prize, you guys. Keep your eye on the prize. The Ace of Cups. 
also man again here to feel look this is what i always say about this card okay this is like my emotional trophy case right these are all the things you've been through in your life it's like when you walk into a high school gym and they have all the trophies in the display case like right when you walk in, in that little foyer area you know and um sometimes you need to like really take stock you need to look at that trophy case and you need to be like wow because sometimes those trophies it's weird like a trophy is just an award. It's just kind of something that's empty. But what gives it meaning is all the blood, sweat, and tears that went on behind it, right? That earned it. It was the process of earning it. So you need to take stock in your life and really say, wow, I've done incredible things and I've earned really incredible things too. Because you have. And you've been through so much and you've had so many trials and tribulations and you're still here and you're still trying to be super positive and you're making your life happen the way you want to make it happen and you're trying to take yourself to the next level and that's like so great right so there's no reason for this feeling of like heaviness that comes on with the seven of coins there's no reason but if you are in fact feeling that way feeling a little melancholy take take stock Okay, why? Why are you feeling that sense of melancholy? Why are you being extra harsh on yourself right now or extra judgmental against yourself? Because you don't need to. Um, temperance is very light, right? Both these cards that come out, they're very light. They're very beautiful. They're very optimistic, very happy. So there's an option for you, definitely 100% on the table, for you to feel elated and ecstatic about how things are moving forward, about your future, about your dreams, okay? You have to keep your eye here. You have to keep your eye on the prize, which is the feeling of love. Because money comes from this. As much as we would like to think this is just an emotional state, that's the most powerful thing when it comes to manifesting whatever you want, right? It's your emotions. It's feeling as though you actually really have that thing. So feel it feel the winning feel what it's like to have that love in your life feel what it's like to have your finances covered you know feel it feel it super cancerian energy i had a feeling this was going to come out it didn't flip out when i was shuffling but i just kind of like saw it in the that i was like oh that's coming out for sure <laughs> definitely coming out and here it is we might also get the devil too but we'll see um but the emperor so yeah it was the hermit the emperor and the devil that i saw when i was shuffling so here we have the emperor it's super cancerian right you have the shell on the outside and you know the vulnerability on the inside. Someone who kind of wears their heart on their sleeve, kind of, but it's upside down. You know, like it's emotional, it's out there, but it's also really protected. But this is a great card for a cardinal energy because it's so like whew, direct. And while I'm telling you now to just relax and to chill out and to not maybe be so cardinal, like allow yourself to be in a fixed season in a fixed house right? Second house, it's the house of Taurus. So allow yourself to be fixed for a while. But you can still strategize. You can still strategize. The meditations are part of going after something, the visualizations, planning. Now is a great time for like really thinking about stuff and just sort of starting to implement the things. Like, for example, if you're wanting a relationship, now is a time for you to, like, do the makeover, right? Maybe go on a couple of dates, set up that profile or whatever you got to do. Like, now is probably a good time to start doing that stuff. Slow, steady, methodical for the purpose of achievement, but without huge amounts of energy behind it. It's very lackadaisical. It's very relaxed, okay? Um, you'll know when it's time to really push with that emperor energy, but the emperor also knows when to hold back. He knows when to fight and he knows when to hold back. He's highly intelligent. So I think you can tell. I think it's in the air. Like now is not the time to charge like full on. It's just simply not the time. Now is the time to like observe and to look at everything.
My leg's falling asleep here. Let's see. Wow, these cards really are flying all over the place. So we get the Five of Swords. Okay. This is your demon, right? Right here. This is your demon. This is the only thing that really holds you back. This is the fear. This is the feeling of failure or this is that argument that you keep having over and over it's like you want so badly to move past it you want so badly to be in that state of joy and bliss and elation you want so badly and yet somehow there's this feeling like you're always kind of self-sabotaging or working against yourself um, in some area, I'm not saying all areas of your life, but maybe there's a pain point. And for all of us, I think a lot of this is really happening in the Saturn Pluto conjunction. There's a lot of focus in that area of your life. Um, so for you, that seventh house activity it doesn't have to be though. It could be something to do with like the 11th house Uranus or the 10th house Chiron, you know, for you, it's going to be special or specific. So that one area in your life where you feel like you just can never get on top, that's really what this is. And there's a lot like that root goes deep and that root might be feeding other branches or other trees. So it's important for you to understand that root at its deepest level, which is why you have the power of the hermit coming out first, okay, to understand that root. Because this is going to sabotage this. Because the five of swords counteracts all of this, because this is the story of someone who looks at that trophy case and still feels like they're not good enough, right? So like, but why? Why? five of swords is real tough it is real tough it's like that cycle and we all have those habits every single one of us we have something that just kind of like continually resurfaces and it's often one of those things where you find yourself there and you're like oh my gosh like I thought I was over this I legitimately thought I was done I legitimately thought I would never have to be in this state again, and yet here I am. I had the same conversation with Aries too. Aries is especially relevant for you because it's 10th house, and of course we've got Chiron in there too. So the 10th house or the midheaven, which is important because it's really like how we present ourselves to the world. I talked to them about how it's so, it's a moment for us to realize how powerful our subconscious mind really is. And even though our conscious mind may look at this five of swords and this seven of coins and like recognize it, understand it for what it is and be like, okay, I don't want to be there anymore. I don't want to keep doing this. And yet somehow the circumstances to be in that same position still just creep in and it's not on purpose. You're not trying to do it, but it's the power of the subconscious mind. And so that's why the... <laughs> Sorry, car going by. That's why those manifestations are so important because those are the things that actually help to reprogram all of that subconscious stuff going on back there. That's why the hermit came out. Right? That's why the hermit came out. And that's why the emperor came out. Because the emperor is capable of doing that. You all are capable of doing it. But if you find yourself in a similar situation that you've been trying to get away from for so long... Now is the time for you to realize, like, holy cow, my subconscious is way in control here. And it's simply acknowledging that fact that's going to help change it, okay? You have to be strong. Strength has been a theme this month. I think a lot of us have had to be strong uh, because there's reasons, there's triggers, there's temptations, there's all these things. And um, we want to just go for it. But the higher awareness, which is represented by the woman here with her connection with the, infi the, inf the infinite or the divinity, okay, she's here and this represents our ego, our lower self, our personality, our desires, all the kind of like the human things. And yet there's a separation here. And it's important for you to realize which part is in operation, right? The emperor is more connected with the higher self temperance most definitely and the hermit most definitely connected with the higher self as they are major arcana okay so 
you know, you're kind of in a battle of the self here. A battle of the self. So the only person that can really break through or break free is you. The only person that can invite a healthy relationship into your life is you. The only person that can invite healthy finances into your life is you. Right? Because my goodness, when I say the eye on the prize, and look, we didn't even get any reversals. Did I put reversals in here? Yes, I did put reversals in here. So you have them, but you didn't get any out. So we have the Wheel of Fortune with the Ace of Cups, which suggests the universe is in motion now as we speak, which it always is. So you have to pay attention to what you're actually manifesting, which we're always manifesting all the time. So you have to consciously redirect thoughts, constantly adjust emotions, consistently lean toward feelings of gratitude and happiness and joy, even if something is tough. You have to do those things because I know you want that Ace of Cups and I know you want that Wheel of Fortune to start working in your favor real quick, right? So any problems can be rectified really fast, okay? And the universe can present really interesting solutions to things that you're not thinking of right now. So you have to open yourself up to it. That's why I always say manifest the feeling, not the circumstances, right? Manifest the feeling of love, not necessarily like the outside part of it okay so let's go ahead and put this camera down and we'll take a look at these cards and keep pulling and then we'll get into the comprehensive clarifiers okay thanks okay cancer so here you can see how they all lay out so let's go ahead and pull two more cards that are from a different tarot deck it's from the eight coins tattoo tarot let's go ahead and see what comes through Death, and the Seven of Swords. Look, Seven of Swords, Five of Swords, Seven of Cup, excuse me, Seven of Coins. So the Fives and Sevens, for those of you who are, aren't, aren't so familiar with tarot, they represent more challenging things in our lives, right? Seven and Fives of Swords is probably one of the hardest things because it has to do with our psychology, right? Swords represent our thoughts. The psychological component is real strong here, but the death coming out right next to it signifies that now really is the time for you to put an end to some psychological cycle that has prohibited success in some area, okay? So, you guys, this is Pluto, Saturn stuff, 100%. This is a card of Pluto, all right? Pluto, Saturn stuff, we're all going through it. And we're all breaking these structures and these patterns that have been set in stone our whole lives. So I don't care if you're 22 year old, two years old, actually luckier probably if you are super young. I don't care if you're 82 years old. We all have them and we're all getting pushed through this portal, okay? So it's really coming down to the nitty gritty of like, are you going to do it? Are you going to do it? Are you going to do it? Because now you have the chance, because now you're aware enough, you're conscious enough, you are awake enough to know that it's there, that it's present. So if you find yourself in a situation yet again, okay, yet again, oh, it's time to put an end to it. It's time to put it to rest. Because I, I think your future wants to open up in huge ways. You know, with Jupiter moving into Capricorn in, I think, November, we're kind of, you know, Jupiter is going to be going direct here in the next few days. It's going to be finishing out its transit in Sagittarius, making its way into Capricorn. So you want to be ready for the blessings that that kind of a transit can bring. Okay? So let's go ahead and pull a couple Oracle cards, and then we'll pull the clarifiers. So this is from my Untethered Soul deck. For those of you who've read the book, these are excerpts from the book. If you haven't read it, I highly recommend you read it. Okay. Deep inner release is a spiritual path in and of itself. It is the path of non-resistance, the path of acceptance, and the path of surrender. That is what Leo season is excellent for. Excellent, excellent. And even Virgo season too. 
for you to simply acknowledge, right, the path of acceptance, accept that this is present, accept that this is here, accept that this has been a part of you, it doesn't have to continue to be, but it has been a part of you, and accept to just release it, it's probably better if you catch yourself being really critical of yourself to put an end to that as soon as possible, okay? Because there's no need to be like extra harsh with yourself. Um, it's simply a matter of acknowledging it and, and releasing it, okay? It's hard, it is hard work. Like a deep inner release is a spiritual path in and of itself. And I think you're figuring that out firsthand. Even if you're not, you know, like even cancers who are not even trying, right? They're not even into tarot or astrology or spirituality in any way, shape, or form. Like, they're still going through it, you know? North noting your sign. Like, you can't ignore it. You are getting pulled. You're getting pulled to where you need to go. So you have to just let it go. Oh, the never-ending story card. <laughs> Man, this one's tough because it's like, oh, like, even she kind of has her head head and her hands there like oh my god yep here we go again and it is the never-ending story and it's time for that never-ending story to really come to a close as indicated with the death card okay and it's internal so it's within your control and acknowledgement and acceptance is the first step all right so let's go ahead and begin clarifying everything we talk for an additional 20 to 25 minutes about these cards um, that I'm about to pull out on the comprehensive reading, which will be a, there will be a link down below in the description box. So if you want to join, you are welcome. So, Hermit Energy, let's take a look here. Oh, the Death card again. A Virgo and Scorpio Energy. Those are tough. Transformative. Yeah. And there you are, Cancer, perfectly capable. You have to care about yourself, though. Right? You have to care about your well-being. You have to withdraw from temptations, from the ego. Looking at temperance now. Okay. A lot of wanting of this Ace of Cups, but it's as though the more and more stressed out you get about it, the further it, it gets. This is all about surrender, right? The path of surrender. It's a test of faith, for sure. I think some of you are really going to struggle with, like, relaxing, being at peace with the way it is. Ooh, got a whole bunch coming out there. Um, I don't normally take that many cards, but since they came out in a big clunk, we'll go ahead and take them. Okay, Ace of Cups, Ace of Wands. No one's going to bring those cups to you, though. You've got to create them yourself. That's the hard part. Another Strength card coming out, too. Oh my gosh, holy cow. Oh, I knew the devil was going to come out. Hold on. These cards are dancing. That's the melancholy right there. There's no need to be melancholy. I think you guys are doing the right thing in a lot of ways. Like by standing still, by not making those gigantic life changes right now, by letting Leo season pan out and show you certain things, you're making all the right decisions. The movement that's happening is internal. Okay. Could be some big stuff with money for you guys. That's the second house nature, brings out the financial. You guys, I don't want to pull this many cards. I'll take the Ace of Swords, but I just don't feel like, I just feel like it's too many. It's going to just confuse the message. So we'll take three. We'll look at the Strength card now.
Aries got this in the exact same position to another hermit. Not surprised. It's the third time really the hermit came out because I saw it when I was shuffling to another seven of swords. So there's a repeat energy there. Boom. Wow. That's a lot of major arcana. Okay. I feel like some of you are wanting to be free of this without having to do the work. Like some of you may be trying to get, this might not apply to everyone, but some of you are trying to get through it or get past it the easy way. And unfortunately the universe is like, um, no, that's not the way this works. Okay, and then four of wands on the bottom of the deck. So lots to talk about. I think there's a lot of financial stuff coming through. So we'll go ahead and dive right in. If you guys wanna join me, again, that link will be down below. If not, then I have an excellent month and I will see you in a couple weeks for Virgo season. Take care, you guys. Bye-bye.